Alright, so last week I showed you this solution to my modelling challenge, which involved n-gons to create our final solution, and I did mention the fact that there was also a fully quad-based solution, which some of you were interested in, so I'll go ahead and show you how we can also uh, achieve this. So let's go ahead and the process is very similar to what we did last week, right? Uh, but this time we're going to work with a cylinder of 32 verts, just a little bit different. I think it's a little bit easier to work with as opposed to the Engon solution, which used 12 and 24 vertices for the cylinders or circles. And so we're just going to bring this up. And obviously you can start with a cylinder if you like. I just, for whatever reason, I kind of find working with circles a little bit more intuitive. And this time we're not going to use a different vert count for the uh, centermost circle or cylinder. Uh, we can just extrude this one in, scale it in, sorry, extrude it up, and then extrude and scale um, to bring in the center. And I'm going to be rather pedantic in this one just because I am making a promise about, hey, this is going to be all quads. Uh, and even these internal parts, I am going to resolve these into all quads as well. I don't think it's necessary, but I'm just going to abide by all quads. Uh, we are going to work with some n-gons at the start here, but we will, I promise we will resolve all of this. Uh, we're going to go to the nth degree of uh, quad-based topology here. So much like last week's solution, we're going to cut this into quarters just so that I can go ahead and then very simply cut the mesh up. So we'll cut that up, we'll bring in a mirror modifier and we'll mirror about the x and y axes uh, and we'll come back and re resolve uh, that later on. So next thing I want to do is I'm just going to select this outermost vertex, shift s, cursor to selected and I'm going to bring in another circle and this one we will drop the vert count of so we'll halve it so we'll bring it down to 16. And we're going to go rotate x 90 degrees and let's just scale this down a little bit. I'm just going to scale it down an arbitrary amount here just so that it sort of fits into my viewport a little bit better. And I'll explain why. So we've got, let's do a count. So we've got one, two, three, four, right? Uh, so we've got these four edges here and we want to use those as a reference point. And then we've got this second middlemost vertex on our 16 vert cylinder here and so we want to align this with this fourth edge over to the right here. So I'm just going to scale that up just eyeball it doesn't need to be perfect so around there so that's roughly in line with that fourth edge. I'm going to tab into edit mode deselect this vertex reselect it and then set up my snapping to be active with vertex as the snap target G Z hold down control and snap that vertex to this topmost face that we've just put in here. So with that, I'm just going to bring this out on the Y a little bit so that we've got some length for the cylinder. Shift D to duplicate it. And then we'll extrude and bring it in on the Y just until this all clips with the rest of the mesh. So something like that. And then if I just shift select the rest of the cylinder, Control Shift and B using the Bool Tools add-on, we can just go ahead and use a different Boolean. It works the exact same as a natural Boolean modifier. It just speeds up the process. So you would just add it manually if you're not using Bool Tools, but I'd highly recommend it. And so I can see I'm not running into any issues here, which is great. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead, Control A to apply that Boolean modifier, and I'll just hide the, the Boolean mesh. And then with this circle, we can go ahead, we can cut it in half, so just delete half those verts there. Shift select the cylinder, Control J to join everything together. And then we can, actually, we'll just need to do a very quick bit of cleanup here. So I'm just going to merge this vertex over to this one up to the right here, just because of the shorter distance. Uh, between them. So I'm just going to go merge at last. And yes, this is probably going to introduce a little bit of distortion here. Uh, we'll do our best to clean it up later on, but please, I'm not going to go out of my way to be like, oh, hey, look, here's a quad-based solution and the shading's worse. That's not what I'm doing here. <laughs> so if I make any mistakes here or if I introduce any distortions, that's my fault and not me going like, oh, yay, N-Gons are so superior and you should never use quads. That's, that's not the goal here. So please... <laughs> Don't misconstrue that. It's, if that happens, it's just a mistake of mine. Uh, and then we can just do a little bit more cleanup here. So we can just merge this to last and we can merge this one to last over here. So yes, I can 100% see we're going to have a little bit of distortion here, but at the end we'll see if we can clean everything up the best we can uh, to alleviate any of the issues that I'm probably uh, bringing in with my style of modeling. And then I'm just going to select all of uh, these verts here, use a bridge operation, and then select these ones at the top, E, G, Y, hold down control to snap this to the front, fill in another face, oops, fill in a face, and then I can just go ahead and fill in these faces, and let's go ahead, I'm just going to dissolve this edge, so yes, we do have some n-gons and triangles at the start, but as I said, it's alright, like, 
they are pretty good for blocking uh, and we will have this all resolved i promise and so let's just get some of the major forms and details in so i'm just going to select these two verts here shift s cursor to selected so that we've got our 3d cursor uh, in the center of this circle because we can't actually get the center since it's mirrored and we'll go e scale just bring this in so it's got a little bit of width and then we'll go e push this back on the y-axis and we can fill in a face here Actually, no, sorry, instead of filling the face, let's go Shift D, so we'll duplicate this. P, separate by selection. And then we'll just select these edges. We'll apply the mirror modifier. We're going to use L to select this back version of it because we don't need it. Then select the remainder of it and we'll use a grid fill. And yeah, that's fine. Uh, we'll just flip the normals on this. Actually, no, it's not fine, sorry. I just realized because we need that center point. So we'll go grid fill. And I'm just going to change the offset by negative one here. Pretty much, I don't know, the span and offset might be different on your end, uh, but I just need this edge running down the middle so that we can mirror things again. And so I'll just delete one side and then I'll recalculate or flip the normals. Control J to join everything back together. Dissolve by distance or merge by distance, sorry. And then just because we're gonna get some funky shading around the edges here, just because of these shaped quads, uh, we're just gonna go ahead, press I and B to insert that to the boundary. And we'll just create a nice support loop on the inside there. Cool. So that's most of the hard work done. And let's just go ahead. Let's get some easy wins and get these loops going on the outside here. So I'm just going to go Control R, G, Z, Control. And then just use my knife tool to cut these in. Also, I'm going to change my mat cap. Sorry. Just a little bit harsh on the eyes. Control R, G, Z, snap that one up there. So most of the process is very, very similar to the solution I provided last week. Uh, there's just probably a little bit more work in this, which is why I kind of prefer the Engon solution personally. But I mean, the beauty of modeling is that, you know, there's no one way to approach things. There's always several ways to do it. And it's just a matter of what way do you prefer the best? And if it shades nicely, well, everybody's happy. Uh, and so this pretty much follows the principles of what I was showing last week is the fact that we can resolve this into all quads. So we can just go ahead and do that, dissolve this middlemost edge, and now we've created a nice support loop that's running up and around here. So we need to get some support loops running down along here, along this way, down and along here, and around the edges of our uh, major form cylinder there. So let's go ahead, let's go Control R, so we'll cut in the loop up here, dump up G, E, and we'll just slide this down. So let's go somewhere around there. And what we want to end up doing, right, is that we don't want all of, like we don't want a big pole occurring here because that's going to introduce pinching and a whole lot of other issues. So the topology we're looking for here is for this edge to create a support loop up and along here, kind of jut out to this point here and then run down along this cylinder. And by the same token, we'll also have a support loop running around the outer side of the cylinder, um, coming up and along here, meeting at this point and doing that. And then if I just trace this, you can notice how we get a square here. So we pretty much just need to get rid of that middlemost edge. It takes a little bit of mental gymnastics, at least I think, to sort of figure this out and think about it. So let's go ahead and let's just control X to dissolve this edge. I'm going to select both of these edges here and I'm going to subdivide. So very similar to what I did last week. Double tap G, I'm just going to slide this in. So we'll just bring it into about there. And then we'll do the same thing up here. So we'll just subdivide these edges, double tap G, slide this down. And I'm just roughly trying to keep the uh, widths between all these points roughly similar. I'm just eyeballing it. So it's not going to be absolutely perfect, but just as close as I can get. And then we can just cut two extra loops in there. Oh, sorry, edges. Control X to dissolve that, and now you'll notice we've got um, some nice quad flow uh, running through there. Now, we also need to address uh, this big end gone here. So what we can do is we can go Control R, we can cut in two loops along this part of the cylinder, Control R, and cut in two more loops up here. And just using our knife tool, we can go ahead and cut these together, like that. And let's go ahead and we'll cut from this vertex down to this one over here. Uh, which has introduced a triangle here, but we can very easily resolve this. We can subdivide it uh, and once again, use our knife tool and cut from this vertex in towards this one. And then just to make this quad look a little bit nicer, we can just double tap G and slide this out. And the display of this doesn't matter too much just because this is on a flat surface. Um, so the way this resolves will be absolutely fine, even if the distribution isn't perfectly even. 
Cool, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's start to address the loop cut around uh, the front part of the cylinder here, and then we'll be all done. So I'm going to go Control r to add in a loop cut here, double tap G, E, and conform this to the inner edge of the cylinder, and then we can use our knife tool again and just complete that loop. And now we need to uh, resolve this. So to just draw out the topology, we're going to want something that kind of comes out like this, and then down and around, and then we'll have an edge flowing through this part here. We'll redirect this edge so that it's going out along this way, and we'll redirect this edge so it's going out and along that way to resolve all the triangles or any other issues that we might run into. So let's go ahead and we're not going to be able to cut a loop through here because this is an n-gon face, so we'll just use the same trick from last week and we'll just subdivide all of these edges down here. So let's go ahead and subdivide. And I'm just going to go back to bounding box, S, Y, 0, just to make sure it's a completely straight edge. And I'm just going to push this in a little bit here. And let's go Control r so we'll cut in another edge, double tap G, E, F, and I'll slide this in. And then I'll use the knife tool, so I'm just going to go K and then C to cut a straight line up. And then K and then C to cut a straight line across there. And then we can use our knife tool once again to cut this edge in. And we can extend this edge up to this vertex at the top and dissolve this edge. So we've got a little bit of a problem, but if you remember the little uh, draw over that I did just a second ago, we're going to easily resolve this. Uh, so let's just go ahead, we'll dissolve both of these edges. I can go Control r to add in a loop around the top here. Double tap G, E, slide this out just to bring it up to the edge. Use our knife tool to connect that up. And then once again, we can go Control r along the bottom here. Double tap G, slide this up. And then also use our knife tool to connect that in. And then for the most part, that's pretty much the entirety of the model done. So we can go ahead and shade smooth. Obviously, we're missing a few loop cuts, and we can go ahead and add those in for the rest of the support loops. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do that. I kind of feel like I've completely butchered the proportions <laughs> this time around. Uh, but the proportions aren't too much of a concern. It doesn't really affect uh, the way things work. So let's just do an edge slide to push that in. Push that one out. We'll just do the two on the inside edge. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten about resolving that massive end on on the uh, inside. We will get around to that. Control R, so I'm just going to double tap G, E, and F. So it snaps to the top edge. Control R, Control R. Two more. That one there. And then we can bring this one up here as well. And then what we're going to do to resolve this innermost part, assuming we're all happy with our topology, we've got nice holding edges, nice hard edges around everywhere. We can go ahead, apply the mirror modifier, uh, delete this innermost vertex, alt select this circle of verts, and we can go ahead and use the grid fill operation. And just for the namesake of having it look a little bit more aesthetically appealing, we can just go ahead and change that offset so that we've got uh, these lines running up and down the middle. And so I think this is looking pretty good. Let's just go ahead and have a look with a harsher mac cap at everything. So we're getting nice clean shading around everything. I don't think the proportions are correct, but as I said, that's not really affecting how things are shading, so to speak, because we've got all the holding edges in. Um, the only thing I don't like about this solution, and this is just a nitpick, it's just the way this area resolves here, and it's purely because you've got uh, this edge length is different from the rest of these ones along the cylinder, right? And it's going diagonally across the face. Um, so I think you can mitigate it a little bit by sort of dropping this down a bit um, and then sort of pushing this vertex in a little bit. So if I just push this in on the X just a bit, I think that helps mitigate it a little bit. Um, but you notice, like, if we just get to here, you can still sort of see, like, this pinching that we're sort of getting. I mean, it, it, it's a minor nitpick, and you might not like the way that the Engon solution resolves with, like, the much larger sort of edge connection. Uh, but that's that's just my personal nitpick. It, once again, that's the beauty of modeling, right? There's different ways to do this, and there's, you know, provided you enjoy your method and it shades nicely, you know, who's to say that it's a uh, bad model at the end of the day, right? Um... So yeah, there you go. That's a fully quad-based solution. And let's just double check. So I'm just going to select one quad face. I'm going to select similar by polygon sides. And that selected everything. So there should be nothing greater than four. Uh, why are those being picked up as being greater than four? Uh, because 
for some reason this loop cut didn't go the whole way through. I almost told a lie about this model, good thing I checked. <laughs> and that also means that these didn't go through either, so I just need to subdivide that. And I'll just do an edge slide to fix that. Let's check again, because I want to make sure that I'm not... Yeah, these are definitely quads. <laughs> oh no, they're not, sorry. Still lying. Slide this back. And we can subdivide this. Sorry, I had no idea this was going to happen. This was not a part of the process. I would have thought this would have cut through. Bring that up, and then... Just because I've already applied the mirror and I'm lazy, I don't want to do it all again on the other side, so let's just pull in a mirror modifier, flip it along the Y, clipping, and we can just apply it. It doesn't need to be at the top of the stack. And now, if I check, Shift G, polygon sides. No, so there is nothing greater than four and there is nothing less than four. There are only quads across the entirety of this mesh. Uh, so there you go, that's two different ways we can do things, one with n-gons or one with entirely quads, and it's completely up to you uh, which one you prefer, but figured I'd show everybody how to do both methods.